Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson and I'm here once again in our super best ultra science test location in the southwest of England. So today it's time for another episode of The Science. And as previously promised in our last video, I'm going to be talking about Delrin, that most important and all permeating of plectro materials. Delrin is incredibly important in the Plectroverse because it forms the majority of the range from Jim Dunlop and it's the 1981 standardization of the Tortex series that really pushed picks into the modern consciousness in terms of what we think of in relation to the guitar today. Before we get kicking off today though, I would like to do my weekly shout out to Howling Monkey. Uh, Brian at Howling Monkey makes all of his picks from Tagawa exclusively and you can have a look at the video I did explaining just exactly what Tagawa is in the little card up in the top left corner. Uh, Brian is a dude, he sent me this marvellous, marvellous shirt which I will model here properly and uh, I would encourage you to go out and check his work right away. So please have a look at the link in the description. So where did Delrin come from? Well, it was developed by a guy called uh, Hermann Staudinger who won a Nobel Prize in 1953 for his services to chemistry. Nice one, Hermann. And it's actually split into two different camps. Now I'll leave a link to some information about this in the description, but what you've got is you've got a copolymer, which is referred to as acetyl, and then you've got homopolymer, which is referred to broadly as Delrin. However, it's known by a lot of other names, which you can see here. There's very, very slight differences between the two things, between acetyl and what's known commonly as Delrin. Acetyl's got a lower coefficient of friction, Delrin's a lot stiffer, and both of them are used in circumstances where you require uh, a rather high level of rigidity, but over a very small distance, so it's used in stuff like wall bushings, uh, knife grips, in gun handles, unfortunately, uh, and many, many other things. What's really interesting about it is that it's made its way into the pick universe primarily because of Jim Dunlop and what he did with the Tortex series. Now, everybody who is watching this video has used Tortex plectrums, I would imagine, at one point in their life. And it's interesting to note that the material actually covers quite a wide range. So if you look at something like the Classic 73, that's made from Delrin, but also the 500 series is also made from Delrin. Now, both of these picks don't feel anything like each other. They don't produce the same sound. And part of the reason for that is because uh, these are opaque matte finished, whereas these are polished ones. Uh, there's a lot more depth and power to these, I think, uh, relatively speaking. I would imagine, not knowing the man, that part of the reason that this fell into the, uh, the Dunlop camp is because it's got very, very low moisture absorption. It's quite slippery, um, but it still offers a pretty solid grip. There are players who've been playing for decades and not really using anything other than these. They're very, very easy to machine. You can injection mold it. Uh, you can finish it off really nicely. All of these things mean that it makes an enormous amount of sense when it comes to mass production. In keeping with the trend of materials like UHMWPE and uh, acrylic uh, in terms of their breadth of app application, uh, Delrin gets used for a lot of things, and it's the, the, the list that I found online is quite surprising. Uh, but you get everything from ski bindings to yo-yos to lock systems and fasteners and all that. And there's probably an abundance of things that you come across in everyday life um, where this material's being used. But it is wonderful to see it in the Plectroverse. Now, of course, we all know if we played these that in terms of its impact resistance, acetyl is actually a bit stronger. This here is a Swiss Pix Atomic Cheddar, which is made from acetyl rather than Delrin. Uh, I will say that in terms of their application, this is slicker and faster through the strings, which is why I imagine Pete Punkowski chose it for his range, although he does also make from polycarbonate and all the rest of it. Uh, but uh, it's very, very tough when it comes to scoring, which we talked about before, 
and also I would say that if I was going to chew through anything in a live setting, I know for a fact that I'd be able to wear one of these down over the course of a gig, uh, whereas the acetal is a little bit stronger. It also depends a lot on the heaviness of your hands and how aggressive you are uh, when you're on stage and practicing. But Delrin's a material that doesn't look like it's going anywhere for a long, long time. A word of advice, uh, and this is a related thing when it comes to your use, use and abuse of Delrin, is that like its cousin Celluloid, it doesn't enjoy being on fire that much. Uh, Celluloid is very prone to catching fire. If you read any of Will Hoover's stuff, will definitely tell you about incidents of people lighting their picks by accident. But this stuff uses formaldehyde in its um, shaping process. And if you burn these, it will release a formaldehyde gas. So don't do that. Ironically enough, um, the Bic group, that wee guy with the head and the cricket bat and stuff, uh, they actually use Delrin to make their lighters. So, so I hope you have enjoyed this brief little whistle-stop tour of Delrin as a material. There's an enormous amount of information out there I would never have been able to squeeze into this video. Uh, so I've left links to a number of very helpful articles that I found in the description. Uh, just remember, if you would like to know anything else about this, you are welcome to come and ask me. And uh, you can hit me up at Heavy Repping on Instagram or you can go to heavyrepping.com and you can find out all about it. In the meantime, I will be back next Tuesday with more inf information from the Plectroverse. And uh, I hope to see you all on the other side of the screen in due course. My name is John Tron Davidson. This is Heavy Repping. And I shall see you all soon. So just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard and rep heavy.